All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at Interstellar Adventure Revived, and now the original Interstellar Adventure was created by forum user Amarius1, and sadly, like so many other mods out there, it just sort of fell by the wayside. But thankfully, it has since been revived by user Protojeb21, and I gotta say, I love this thing, as it is a very very impressive planet pack, adding into the game five entirely new solar systems for you to explore. And what makes it even better is each of these solar systems is actually meant to be a near realistic representation of their counterparts in our own universe. Now, of course, they're not one-to-one -one copies, but uh, shall we say inspired by the real world, which you know, just makes it all the better. So let's jump right on into the tracking station and have a look at what it does add in. Now, of course, <laughs> oh boy, we're going to have to uh, toggle through our own system for a little bit here until we get to the first of the new planets, which is Selfar. There we go. And now this one's quite unique because it actually doesn't orbit any planet whatsoever. It is a large rogue super Kerbin orbiting between our own Kerbal system and the next system that's added in by this Trappist-1. And it's, you know, just a big purpley ball just kind of hanging out there in the universe with, of course, no atmosphere. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty psychedelic, frankly. I mean, come on, look at those rocks. That's just uh, some very, very interesting coloring. Now, it does have a medium-sized desert moon, which currently has no atmosphere, but uh, they do plan on adding an atmosphere in the next version, which, I don't know, I kind of find slightly awkward having a rogue planet with an atmosphere, but I don't know why, it just, it just feels weird to me. But overall, very cool little moon and a very cool rogue super carbon. Now on to the first actual system, Trappist-1, with a very, very ultra-cool red dwarf star, only about 11% the size of Kerbal, so it's not really putting out much light at all, and this one only has a singular planet orbiting it, and that is Theros. It is a tiny little desert world, which I should mention is kind of a theme of a lot of these planets. There are a lot of desert worlds in this pack. And as you can see, it's tidally locked with uh, <laughs> half of it frozen on one side and the other side facing the sun there being, um, well, dry desert. And as you can see, it actually does have a, a present atmosphere, but I believe it's quite a thin one. Yeah, it's only 0.06667 atmosphere. So uh, not exactly the thickest thing in the world, but it will give you a little bit of atmospheric drag. Now the next system we're going to get into is uh, kind of an interesting one. Now it is the Neobe, or Neobe, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Neobe Amphion. This is actually a binary system, but the other sun, if we zoom out to see the rest of it, is over there. It is the final sort of, I guess, celestial body in the system, orbiting a very widely around the rest of the planets in it. So it's uh, not too important for you for, uh, well, dealing with the inner planets, but it is very cool to be noted that it is a, an interesting binary system. Now, there we go. This is the primary star, though, Neob or Neobe, however in the world you are supposed to say that. And the first planet that we have in this system is Eotia, which is a rocky super Kerbin that's covered in dried lava flows, has an atmosphere, again, I don't see how. I think it'd be burned off a long time ago, considering how close it is to that star. But, I mean, I can roll with it. And is full of a lot of deep ravines, so it'll be a pretty difficult planet to land on, for most of it at least. There are some sections that aren't quite as bad around here, but overall, cool little planet. Oh, though again, a very thin atmosphere for what it does have. Now the next one is Colossi, and it is... I actually think one of my favorite planets in the pack, not my favorite, we'll get to that one eventually, but I don't know, I just, I like the band of different coloring going around this planet. Now it is another desert planet, has an atmosphere, again, a very thin atmosphere, but, uh, you know, is, is there, still very close to that star. 
The next one we have is Neverita. N Neverita? Oh, guys, a lot of these names, I'm going to just say it right now. I'm going to screw up the pronunciation on, but hey, yeah, they're there. And it is, of course, a gas giant. It's supposed to be a small, warm jewel, according to the description on this one. The next we have is Igeria, and it's, of course, another cool-looking little gas giant. And this one does have a moon, which is Manius, which is meant to be a large pink ice moon with an atmosphere. Again, thin, but does have an atmosphere. And it's, uh, yeah, kind of pink. Though the surface is, looks more brown to me, but the atmosphere, definitely pinkish. Now, the next thing we have is another very cool gas giant. This one much bigger and greener. And this is Nerevik. And I love this one because it has two rings. They're kind of hard to see in here. And actually, they're kind of hard to see in the game as well, unless you are at, say, an angle like that with the planet. But it does have two very cool rings with two moons kind of orbiting around them one being dead in the middle which is nk1 and it's just a tiny little moon covered in methane ice apparently and i love the look of this thing oh man it's gonna be some difficult terrain if you want to land anywhere up there now the other moon is nk2 again just a, you know nice little moon big dusty place apparently according to the description on it and then the final moon Coke out? I'm probably not saying that right in the slightest, but it is a green titan analog with life, according to the description. It has a 0.6 atmosphere on it, so a lot thicker than some of the other ones we've seen so far. And yeah, it does actually have oceans and land masses, etc. A pretty interesting planet, but still, I don't know, just something about it something about it. I like it, but not as much as what we're going to be seeing momentarily in my favorite system, which is the next star system. Of course, we still have Amphion here, the other sun for Neob Amphion, but now to my favorite star system, Cervantes. I love this one. Big, bright star, very nice, producing a lot of light. It has its own freaking ring around the star, which is just awesome. And it also has, I think, some of the coolest planets in this pack. Now, the first planet we're going to run into is Dulcine, which is a scorched super carbon full of boiling lakes of tar. So you probably don't want to land in there because, well, that uh, probably won't end well for your carbons in the slightest. And is overall a very, very cool planet. I just love the yellow look to it. The idea of boiling lakes of tar just entertains me. And so very, very awesome place. Now the next planet we have is Rosinante. And as you can see, a beautiful gas giant. And it has two moons. The first being Awas, which is a rocky moon, no atmosphere on this thing, but, uh, you know, pretty cool looking. I do like it, how pop-marked it is with various impact craters. And the next moon, which is Pegsos, which is just a apparently a captured dwarf planet for this one. Again, no atmosphere. Interesting coloration on it. I do enjoy it. And now we get to my favorite selection of planets and moons. Quixote, a just gorgeous, go gorgeous, no gorgeous, blue gas giant with a ring, very, very cool. It is apparently in the habitable zone for this solar system, which makes sense that its first moon is La Mancha, a very, very habitable world, which you can see I did put a space probe around earlier, and it is just gorgeous. You got the polar ice caps, you have multiple continents, you got this cool ring continent here, which I love. And just overall, a very, very beautiful planet with a lot of differing climates and areas, etc. Very cool, and I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to orbit an amazing gas giant with a ring? That's just fun. Now, the next planet, and uh, I actually, La Mancha, I probably should mention, is my favorite planet here. It's just, it's, it's freaking sweet. And then we have Barcelona, which is 
a water planet with two ice caps, so the ice caps are going to be the only place you can actually land in this whole thing. Uh, the rest is water, so you probably don't want to splash down in there unless you have a submarine, perhaps. That might be a fun thing to explore the planet with. And then the final moon that we do have here is Morina, which is just a sadly dead rocky moon compared to the other two life fool ones. This one just seems out of place, but still... But still, a beautiful, beautiful little planet. We then have Sancho, which is the next gas giant here. And as you can see, it has a fair few moons. The first of which being Galati, which is a desert moon with a breathable atmosphere. <laughs> Again, back with those desert moons. Uh, we then have Elastro, which is a ice moon, uh, but has an atmosphere on this particular one, which intrigues me. I don't know why, but ice moons with atmospheres kind of always weird me out. We then have Elysio, which is uh, no atmosphere on this one. Has a very cool impact basin. Just overall a very awesome looking planet. I do enjoy the look of it. And lots of different cool places to add some difficulty to your landings. And then finally, Dorini, or Darani? That, that sounds more correct. Which is just a, another heavily cratered moon there. Very, very nice indeed. And then the last thing we have in Cervantes is Kaylee the Comet. Which, um, I mean, it's supposed to be a comet, that's its intent, but it's basically just a green, oddly shaped marble. It has a very cool orbital path through the system, though, if we do actually zoom out here so we can see it. There we are, a very interesting orbit, just sort of ducking right into the system and back out. And yeah, meant to be a comet. Very interesting thing to try and land on, considering its odd shape. And of course, it is just freaking tiny. It, is a, it has a radius of 47 kilometers. Not exactly the biggest thing in the world, but like, you know, again, comet. And then we move on to our next star system, K2-3, which is an interesting one. There we go. We have another red dwarf star here. Very nice. And its first planet is... Phosis, I think that's how you say that, and this one is another ocean planet, but a very hot ocean planet that's tidally locked with the star, so we have half the planet covered in ice. In fact, actually more than half the planet covered in ice, but overall, very cool place. Again, does have an atmosphere like so many. Uh, we then have uh, some moons for this one in the form of Sius, which is a small, apparently captured dwarf planet under extreme tidal friction. And it's a very, very nice looking place. It does look like it has some uh, interesting fault lines and, well, quite rocky. Would be difficult to land pretty much anywhere there. And then the next moon is a CEO, which is just, you know, not much of a description on this one. It just says Rusty Selena Moon. <laughs> so there you go. Now the next planet is Brigid, which is meant to be a uh, gas dwarf and a very nice mint color to it. I like it. Reminds me of ice cream. I like it. It's good. And that is it for K2-3. So we then come to the final star system, Kepler-296, which is a binary system. There we go. So we got the twin red dwarfs orbiting one another and with a tiny singular, hold on, there we go, desert planet. <laughs> Our final planet in the whole thing is of course a desert planet. I told you there are gonna be a lot of them. It does have an atmosphere, a very thin, overall quite a cool little place. I like how it looks like there's very smooth bits then rocky bits and sort of valleys going through connecting the different areas. Very, very nice. Overall, a cool planet. And that is everything in the Interstellar Adventure Revived. Now, of course, I do have an ion-powered space probe out here. And uh, we're not gonna really going to hop around to multiple planets. We're just kind of going to sit in orbit around my favorite planet. Because, well, frankly, I just love the look of this place. I mean, come on, you've got the star with a ring over there you have this planet 
and then that gas giant with a ring right there. How could you not love to put a colony on this thing? It's just awesome. And I mean, the planet itself is pretty cool. Now, as for upcoming features for this thing, you may have noticed that some of the textures are a little bit low on some of the planets that we've seen so far, and that is something they're wanting to revise. So they're working on better texture maps, a revamp of a couple of the planets, fixes to some of the atmosphere. Uh, they want to ex uh, expand the K2-3 system, apparently, and of course, add in a lot of better detail to the different terrains, and of course, add more moons. Who doesn't like more moons? Now, there are some other things on here, like working on another binary system, uh, adding more other star systems in, but those are further down the road. Things like the texture maps and the fixes of terrain, those are much more immediate and will soon to be, hopefully, possibly in the next version. There is supposed to be a version coming soon, which is meant to fix some things. I believe I did mention it on one of the planets. It's supposed to fix the atmosphere on it. I don't remember which one that was now. And I should mention a slight bug at the moment is that Currently, if you download this mod from the link page that, of course, I include in the description, it's technically going to be out of date because it comes pre-packaged with Copernicus, which is how all of this functions. And sadly, that version of Copernicus is the older version, so you'll have to delete that out and get yourself the uh, newest form of Copernicus that released like a week ago, I think, and that will get everything to work. If you use the older Copernicus, Yes, it's just not going to load up the planets whatsoever, and you're just going to be left with, um, well, frankly, nothing. Uh, but yeah, so do make sure if you are going to use this before it updates, because like I said, I'm in version... 1.0 of the revived so if you see it saying version 1.1 you're probably fine but if you download it when it's still 1.0 yeah go download the newest version of copernicus that will fix your issues uh, but yes that is really it for this mod a lot of great planets some beautiful star systems to explore I think this is one of my favorite designed planet packs. I mean, I still really got to lean towards boldly go for my favorite planet pack because that thing creates entire freaking galaxies. But for a hand-designed system of star, well, hand-designed collection of star systems, much better way to put it. I think this is probably one of my favorites. It's beautiful, adds a lot of great places to the world for you to explore, and just overall is very well made. I'm very happy that it was revived. So if you would like to check it out for yourself, take a look at the link in the description, as always. And if you would like to help support the channel, you can take a look at the Patreon link in the description or on the end slate. And of course, if you'd like to communicate with myself and other members of the community, jump on our Discord server and have a little chat. In fact, I'm going to get on there right after recording this video and, you know, talk to people. Always good to socialize. Well, that's going to be it for this episode, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.